America as a country is lost. They think I'm a theofascist. It's a scary thought for a lot of people. I want rulers who do not fear God. And it might surprise people to know that you're a threat to my continued holding of power. So I would say, okay, that's a problem. The ministry of justice is the state. And you can separate church and state because they're two different governments. I don't want to separate morality and state, but I do want to separate church and state. Here in the United States, we have to deal with the facts on the ground. God takes you from where you are not from where you should have been. And that leads us into another hot button issue, which is immigration. Chaos. I, chaos. I understand that some people are not gonna believe me on this, but I, I would be disqualified from uh, being in the state legislature. I'm in favor of immigration. Then you see this flooding, you're like, wait a second, this- We're swamping the lifeboats. And I distrust our government, rulers, who have no concern for morality at all. There's right and wrong. I'm anti-chaos. I'm glad you uh, brought that question up because it's, I think in many ways, the central question of our age. So when you talk about church and government, people, a lot of people, especially people watching or listening, understand the premise that America as a country is lost, mm -hmm. that maybe a move towards more conservative values is needed and necessary. But then people really get caught up on the separation of church and state. Everyone believes that they are supposed to be separate, that's yeah. designed to be separate. And the idea of maybe kind of merging them or having them running in parallel, is a scary thought for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, I'm glad you brought that question up because it's, I think in many ways, the central question of our age. And it might surprise people to know that I'm a strong advocate of the separation hmm. of church and state. Which is contrary to what the internet will say. Yeah, that, yeah the internet doesn't think. <laughs> and certain individuals and they, they have a lot of choice words for you sometimes. They, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they think I'm a theofascist or that I want <laughs> that I want some sort of evangelical Protestant mm. Iran with mm. uh, reformed ayatollahs, you know, dictating. But but that's the vision people have in their mind when that, you talk about some sort of conjoining of the two. Correct. But I would insist. I would. I'd argue this. The, the separation of church and state is a Christian theological development. It, I, not only do I agree with it, but I would argue strongly for it. Hmm. But I would distinguish. There, you have to distinguish. This, you can separate church and state and must separate church and state because they are both forms of government among men. This is men being governed around word and sacrament, around the preaching of the gospel. That's one form of government. And then the ministry of justice is the state. It's their job to make it possible for you to walk across town safely at two in the morning. Mm. That's their, they're the ministry of justice. That's one kind of government. Church is another kind of government with a different task. And you can separate church and state because they're two different governments, just like you can separate apples and oranges mm. because you've got two bowls and here's the counter and I put the apples in one and the oranges in the other. Okay, but that's a very different question than the separation of God and state hmm. or the separation of morality and state. How, how would it sound if someone said, I want to be governed by uh, rulers who have no concern for morality at all? Hmm. I feel like we live in that society right now. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, I, I want rulers who do not fear God. Hmm. I, I want rulers who will govern the United States without any reference to a moral code whatsoever. Now, that's not apples and oranges. What that is, is apples and freshness. Hmm. Right? I want the apples to be fresh, and I want the oranges to be fresh. So if, if, you had, if we had rulers who said, whether I kill you or not is a moral consideration, you're, you're in my way, right? You, you're a threat to my continued... Um, holding a power. So if I can bring lawfare uh, suits against you and imprison a political imp opponent, there's no moral consideration that's going to stop me. Right. So I would say, okay, that's a problem. So if I, but if I have moral, cons if I want the president and I want the Congress and I want the Supreme Court to behave morally, well, who defi whose morality? Hmm. All of a sudden, it, that's a theological question. So I don't want to separate theology and state. I don't want to separate morality and state, but I do want to separate church and state. So this is one of the interesting things in the early um, in the early colonial Amer uh, era. 
uh, the various states would do things like this. I think South Carolina, one of the Carolinas uh, is the example I'm thinking of, is in order to hold office in that state, you had to be a confessing Christian. Hmm. Okay, um, you, you, it, it was a requ- they had religious tests for office. You had to be a Christian. You were also simultaneously prohibited from being a minister. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So, if, if I were alive in that era, in that time, you wouldn't qualify. I, I would be disqualified from uh, being in the state legislature hmm. because they didn't want to mix church and state. Right. The minister is answer the body of church and the body, the body of, of the state. state. They didn't want to mix the apples and oranges. They mm. wanted the ministers to stay over there, and they wanted the legislators to stay over here. But they wanted the whole thing to be Christian. Mm. So th- there's a um, there's a very s- sharp difference between the what I would describe the informal Christian consensus, the informal Christian establishment that we had from the founding. And it was overwhelmingly Christian, and it did not lead to uh, Handmaid's Tale, women in red dresses, uh, that that sort of thing at all. And we perfected the whole idea of the separation of church and state. But it's not the same thing as the separation of morals and state. So if you're building a government and you want to be inclusive, because there are other religions, there are other ideas— that would be difficult for some people because you would say only Christian, but people say, well, a lot of the country is not Christian. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea is that certain people that even if they're not aligned in the same religious values, they may have similar moral values. Mm-hmm. For example, a devout Muslim or a devout Hindu mm-hmm. could possibly be good moral people, hardworking people. Mm-hmm. Would you consider them to be a part of that same structure then? Or because of the sun, certain fundamental differences in ideology, it's still too far of a gap to close. One of the things versus my, maybe an atheist who doesn't believe any of it. Right. One of the things my dad used to say is that God takes you from where you are, not from where you should have been. Hmm. Right. And one of the things we have to deal with is, as we labor for reformation here in the United States, we have to deal with the facts on the ground. The, who's already here? Hmm. Who's already here? Who's been here for generations? Uh, you know, what what are we going to do? And you don't um, you you don't uh, pull an ex post facto business where you start unwinding, you know, hmm. breaking breaking your word and doing that sort of thing. But if you're asking, uh, so you have to start where you are, and that includes Muslims and Hindus and Jews hmm. and people who are not Christian, but. Uh, and I understand that some people are not going to believe me on this, but I I have a stronger faith in a Christian accommodation of a Muslim's rights mm. than I would of if I were a Christian in a Muslim society. Mm. So uh, a Muslim living here, let's say we got our way, and let's mm. let's say we were had a, a Christian governance. Mm. I believe that we would treat the Muslims right. Mm. I don't believe that the Muslims, if I were in Saudi Arabia, mm. I don't believe Christians would be treated the same way. Mm. Right, right. So I trust us to take care of the Muslims better than I trust the Muslims to take care of us. And s- since governance, uh, governing decisions cannot be neutral. Right? You've, you've, there's right and wrong, and it's wrong to fly airplanes into skyscrapers. I don't care if Allah told you to do it. That's 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 wrong, and so you have to you have to come down and say, uh, uh, if we are going to ground our laws on the will of God, some someone's going to say, well, yeah, but which God? Hmm. And I would say, well, the true true God, the, the true God. But the true God is not going to demand that we start wronging people who don't know Him yet, hmm. right? So I I believe that. Um, there would be, it wouldn't be the way it is now where it's just a pandemonium, but uh, chaos, I, chaos, where anybody can do whatever they want. But in an ideal Christian republic, I don't see any problem with uh, a Muslim living there or owning property or um, having his rights respected in court and uh, all of that. 
But what he wouldn't do is be legislating on the basis of the Quran. Hmm. That, that's that's the area where I'd say no, we're not we're not going to do that. We're going to be a Christian people, and if you want to accommodate yourself to the way we do things here, then great. But that that leads us into another hot button issue, which is immigration, hmm. because for many many years the United States did a very good job of assimilating immigrants from all over the world and and assimilating them into the basic um, Anglo-Protestant ethos mm. that was America. And the assimilation worked. The chaos on the border now means that you we're swamping the lifeboats and we can't they're coming in too fast. It's not the problem. It's not people are coming in. The problem is that they're coming in too fast for us to assimilate. Mm. And what's going to happen is just um, ethnic chaos, ethnic uh, clashes. So um, whether it's Hindu or Muslim or uh, people coming from all over, I think would be would be and should be welcome in a Christian republic, but not by the metric ton, not by the millions. Hmm. Just flooding over. Not the flooding over. Right? I think a lot of even American immigrant families that are here, they see what's going on at the border. Like, no, this yeah. this doesn't seem right. Yeah, There's a not. process. A lot of people that are here followed the process, did what they felt was the right way to do it. The, the rules of the game were laid. Right. This is what we did. Adore. We try to follow the rules. And you see this flooding. You're like, wait a second. This... Yes. Why do we do it the right way for all of these years? Right. And it puts a distrust in the system, distrust in the laws. Right. It makes you want not even follow them. And so when people talk to me about this, I say, I'm not, I'm not anti-immigration. Mm. I'm anti-chaos. Yeah. I'm anti-anarchy. I'm, I'm in favor of immigration because I don't, I don't want to build a wall, a, a wall that keeps everybody out. Absolutely, hmm. is a wall that keep can keep everybody in. Also, hmm. <laughs> right? And I distrust our government. I don't think that um, uh, when I don't want to give them powers to exclude every alien because that also gives them power to monitor every citizen. And I, I just want to be careful about that. And so my concern is for the rule of law, not the not the anarchy 